Welcome to the American Diversity Report Podcasts. I'm your host, Deborah Levine, Editor-in-Chief of the American Diversity Report. We love to interview movers and shakers and diverse change makers. And today we have with us Celine Caloni Williams. She will be speaking to us about ancient traditions for modern living. With a degree in psychology and a master's in screenwriting, Celine has authored several international best selling books and documentaries on psychology, deep ecology, shamanism, yoga, philosophy, and anthropology. She is the founder and director of the Imaginal Academy Institute of Switzerland. Welcome, Celine. Oh, thank you for having me. A pleasure. You've been very busy. Tell me, how did you get started in all this beautiful work? Oh, after many years of shamanic yoga practice, being a psychologist and having received a lot of benefits from the practice of shamanic yoga, I decided to start using the healing practices and the spiritual exercises known in the Mala Mantra tradition, which is the core of shamanic yoga, with my patients. And uh, I immediately received uh, a positive feedback. And so I decided to, to found uh, a school of shamanic yoga in Switzerland. The school is uh, for anyone. And uh, from the beginning, uh, among the students, uh, there have been many psychologists, counselors, life coaches, uh, and many yoga teachers. These teachers uh, and therapists uh, helped to, um, to spread the shamanic yoga all over Europe. And now, now we have hundreds of students in the school doing courses uh, uh, most uh, of which uh, are on online and so can be attending uh, remotely. Uh, we offer uh, only a retreat that must be attended personally. We host uh, this retreat in many places of the world and from this current year we host it also in the US and um, I'll be in the US in October in California um, in San Jose, I will do a seminar at the SAND, the Science and Non-Duality Conference. And then um, in November, I will be in Seattle uh, for um, another um, retreat. And um, yes. So you're going to be uh, traveling here. And uh, I, I know that you're in Switzerland now. And I, uh, I think that you, you grew up elsewhere? Yes, I grew in Italy, but I'm here in Switzerland uh, since uh, 20 years. <laughs> 20 years, I see. So you are quite the international figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about uh, the, um, what you teach and the philosophy and the training that you give. Oh, yes. Uh, first of all, I, I, I would like to say that the teachings of the Mada Mantra and uh, the shamanic yoga uh, find their origin in a very ancient tradition, which is an animistic tradition. I was initiated to the path of shamanic yoga more than 30 years ago in Sri Lanka by my teacher, Michael Williams, who despite his English name was a Tamil, a yoga and a shamanism a scholar. And uh, the Mala Mantra and the shamanic yoga is a very ancient tradition which aims to the absorption of reality or withdrawal of projections. Uh, what, what do we mean with these two phrases? We mean soul making and deep uh, ecology. This in its turn means taking on those objects, people and feelings that we have met in the course of our lives back to their original state of image, dream projections. We see we live in a universe that is not substantial, but is symbolic. And this perfectly matches the Buddhist concept of samsara will, otherwise known as the wheel of illusions. 
It is therefore Chitamaya, or the seat of our conscience. And the same concept ex exists in Hinduism too. In, in, in the Linga Purana, we read, uh, the existence is a Shiva's dance, who dancing awakens matter and makes of it pulsating waves. And this is poetry, but it's also science. It reminds us, in fact, of quantum physics, where matter is uh, seen as um, waves uh, pulsating in the void. So, uh, matter is impermanent. In the tradition of the Mada Mantra, we say it's like lightning. It appears and disappears. It does not last. It is unsubstantial. And so, our minds must be deceiving us when we see reality as permanent and substantial. And this deceit is in truth a cage, wherein we suffocate and suffer. Since uh, if events are considered as objective, they cannot be modeled by our ability to imagine. And this is how a person ends up being a victim of events, rather than creator or lover. In my seminars, I, um, I teach people how to evolve from a victim level, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to another level, uh, the level um, that I called the co-creator of events. Because, um, you see, creation of events is um, an imaginative uh, process. When we um, imagine, um, and when we describe reality, when we tell ourselves our inner narrative, we evoke uh, events from, uh, uh, from a, an invisible dimension. For the ancients, uh, events were gods and goddesses, uh, not <laughs> material facts. And uh, this uh, process of uh, evoking is um, a creation process. And um, being the co-creator of the events with the gods, with the invisibility, um, is, um, is a very good way of uh, being. Uh, and uh, helps people to um, to release uh, anxiety, fear, phobias, uh, because you see, until you are a victim, <laughs> of course you, you feel phobias and fears, but from the moment you start, uh, be aware of your uh, um, power to create, and evoke and create events. So, <laughs> fear disappears. So those of us who uh, want to be creative can use your, or this ancient way of thinking, uh, this mysticism to be more creative, correct? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, in, in the shamanic yoga tradition, there, uh, there are many uh, exercises, practices, uh, uh, spiritual uh, practices, uh, which help us uh, to be more creative. For instance, the, the flowing uh, sequences. And uh, people can find some example of flowing sequences on my website if they want to, to, to watch at them. And um, uh, they, are, um, uh, sh um, they are yoga postures done in um, uh, flowing sequences. Uh, and um, these postures imitate animal positions and they are done um, in a imaginal forest, um, which is an inner dimension reached by active visualization. I love it. So I grew up on an island, and if I visualize 
I usually go for the ocean and the waves and the sound of the sea. Would that be similar? Oh, yes, yes, it's similar. Na nature is our best teacher. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes. That's amazing. And, and uh, all of us really can, can access that imagery and make something of it that would uh, calm us down, make us more creative, uh, give us a little bit more of a sense of empowerment, yes? Oh, yes, yes. I think that uh, human beings make a big mistake. <laughs> Uh, they uh, act and think as uh, ideas were products of their brain. But um, as the ancients uh, knew, ideas um, are gods and goddesses, um, not product of our brain. So uh, one should be open in order to be inspired from natural ideas, ideas coming from nature. Um, if you stay in touch only with the social thoughts and social ideas, of course you suffer and you feel fear and phobias because <laughs> social thoughts and idea don't have the objective of uh, um, awaken you and um, make you fulfilled. Um, so uh, my suggestion is stay close to the nature and uh, stay open as much as possible in order to be inspired by nature. And this in shamanic yoga means uh, to be, to stay in a state of ecstasy. Ecstasy is uh, an amplified state of consciousness, uh, is a trance-like state, is a, a self-transcendent state, is a non-dual state of consciousness. And um, uh, through shamanic yoga practices, uh, we reach this state uh, um, uh, through um, active uh, visualization, um, mantras, uh, um, yoga postures, uh, and, um, and contemplation of beauty, uh, aesthetic experience uh, allow, allows us uh, to go beyond ethic, ethics or morals level and uh, teaches us inclusiveness. Inclusiveness is much more than morals or ethics. Um, it, it is something that exists beyond the mind. And uh, to reach the power of inclusiveness um, is, is so easy. It's enough, for instance, uh, to contemplate beauty in nature because uh, beauty allows you to stop your mind you can't judge when you see beauty you can't discriminate where you are in front of real beauty and so you must go beyond the limits of your mind um, i always say that uh, shamanic yoga is a, an aesthetic experience which is a real alternative to the therapeutic experience. And yet you have many people who are therapists taking your classes. I gather that they hope they'll learn something that they can pass along in their therapy, yes? Oh, yes, 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 because um, you see, if therapeutic models are allowed to become our go-to solutions for all problems, they are bound to be seen as the only possible solution. But beauty is poetry, willingness, love, ecstasy, which in its turn 
is a, a state of self-transcendence, a state of wider consciousness in which we can know at a higher level. For instance, nature teaches us impermanence, which can help us to win the death of fear, the fear of death. Uh, when you are in contact with nature, uh, take, uh, take, for instance, uh, three deep breaths, and then stay a few seconds without breathing. Hold your breath for a few seconds and feel yourself disappearing. This really helps you to overcome profound fear that you are not aware of. Nature teaches us the rhythm, for instance. Beauty is rhythm. And this is the principle of being at the right place and at the right moment. All things in nature follow this principle. The flowers bloom at the right time and also animals stop hibernating at the right time. Catching the right moment is an instinctive ability. If you want to develop uh, this ability in the Mother Mantra tradition, in, in the Shamanic Yoga tradition, is suggested uh, a meditation. For instance, when walking in the forest um, and uh, when you see a bird, an animal, or an insect, think that uh, to be there in that moment at the right time is not a coincidence, but the result of a rhythm that unites everything, including you, in the forest, and then thanks the rhythm. This is a simple, really simple meditation, but is a very powerful tool that can help uh, to, tune, uh, to tune in with universal harmony, which means being in the right place at the right time to reach your goals. Nature can really help us to reach our goals and to fulfill ourselves. Well, the sense of harmony that you talk about is really needed today, isn't it? We're, we're living in a quite divisive world. Oh, yes, yes. We live in a really violent world and, uh, and we need uh, unity. We need unity and we need the calm, serenity, peace in order to be helpful uh, towards nature. Uh, when uh, human beings uh, feel uh, anger or anxiety, stress, uh, they tend to behave, um, to be destructive toward, uh, towards nature. And um, I think that nature can't support this behavior for, a, uh, for a more, more time. And so, um, so we have absolutely, we must absolutely to change the deep symbols and deep myth upon which our behavior and our psyche is built in order to be more um, helpful uh, through our nature. We need to change our economics models. We need to change our politics models in order to be more ecological. Because uh, a true ecology can't be only uh, <laughs> built electric cars instead of uh, oil cars. Yes, this is, this is helpful, uh, but it is not enough. We have to do something um, more deep. We have to change the symbols that are underneath our behaviors in order to act different towards nature. Well, thank you for that. I think that's very true. So many of us are wondering when and how we will become more humane, uh, or are we just going to keep going on this violent path that generates so much hatred and vile, 
behavior and language. And uh, you have offered us a, an alternative, I think, that people need to hear. And can you tell us how they can reach you and your website and, and a little bit about how they can learn more? Oh, yes, they can reach me through my website and my Facebook page. Uh, my website is um, um, Celine Caloni Williams dot com, um, and uh, my web page is uh, Celine Caloni Williams. And uh, through my website, they can do a lot of webinars for free. They can uh, for instance, uh, have uh, examples of uh, fluid sequences and also they can uh, read and uh, buy my books. Uh, they can buy my books also on Amazon or uh, uh, where they want, but uh, through my website they can see the content of the books and choose the one they want. And... Um, and, and they can, of course, uh, take part of my retreats and seminar. I do retreats uh, in many parts of the world. Most of them are in uh, Siberia because I work with uh, Siberian shamans. And uh, so people can come with me in the Altai regions and do this uh, retreat. Also, um, I do retreats uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, where my teacher is still there. And um, we can practice uh, yoga and meditation uh, in, the, in the middle of the jungle, <laughs> in the wild nature. And um, also, I do retreats in Japan, because uh, in the last 10 years, uh, I, I studied a lot um, uh, Shintoism uh, tradition and uh, Shilling Yoko tradition. I wrote a book about Shilling Yoko, which is uh, the art, the Japanese art of uh, immersion into the, into the nature. And, uh, and then um, I do seminars and retreats in the U.S. Oh, God, yes, you mentioned that you were coming to the U.S., to California in particular, I remember. And um, I hope that you will uh, let us uh, know uh, a little bit more about that. Maybe we'll do another podcast sometime in the future so people can, can hear you again. I think it's so important. And I want to thank you for sharing all of this with us and audience. Um, it's time to, uh, to shift gears here and to take a look at uh, this beautiful way of, of, of being and all of us can perhaps be more inclusive in the future and enjoy it. So oh. thank you so much, Celine. Thank you. Thank you to you, to your sweet and beautiful presence in this world. Thank you for your voice. Thank you very much. And thank you, audience. Tune in for more, of course, of the American Diversity Who Report podcast. <laughs> I will be looking forward to it. Take care, all. Thanks. Bye.